What is going on everyone? In this simple video today, I'm gonna to be showing you all how to run Windows XP 64-bit in VirtualBox. And basically what VirtualBox allows you to do is run this operating system on top of your current existing operating system. So for this video, I have Windows 10 already. And I've provided a zip file through Mediafire, which has all of these files here, including the code for Windows XP, a web browser, the network drivers, some guest edition drivers, and then of course the ISO itself to install XP on the virtual box. And once you go ahead and download my zip, obviously go ahead and extract that and then put that somewhere easy to access. And you're also gonna to wanna to make sure you download VirtualBox and I'll have a link for that down below as well if you don't already have it. Once you've done both of those things, just go up to new so you can create a new virtual machine, go ahead and give it a name. And if you'd like it to be stored somewhere than the default um, C drive machine folder, this is where it'll be installed to, you can go ahead and select another location. And for myself, I'm using a network drive here. Then go ahead and select the ISO image, which is gonna be the file Windows XP 64 Pro. And I would recommend skipping the unattended install and following my steps here. And then just click on hardware and it probably won't need more than four gigs, but you could probably give it even like two gigs if you want, which I'm gonna go ahead and give it four just cause I have 16 gigs in my system. Um, these are your threads here. I'd recommend at least four threads or a quarter, whatever you have for your most threads. And then for your hard disk, um, virtual machine creates a virtual hard disk so that it fills up the space as it's needed so you can basically set this to as much as you want and then it's only going to use whatever space it actually requires and Windows XP barely requires any space so I'm just going to leave it as the 10 gigs but you can do as you wish and within settings you can leave general alone you can leave system alone but in display you're going to want to max out the video memory I know 128 megs is not a lot but it's the best you can do right now and storage can stay as is you can leave audio alone, and then with the network, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have Intel Pro 1000 MT desktop selected, which it should have done by default. Serial ports you can leave alone, USB you can leave alone, and I'll be showing you guys how to add a shared folder in the future. Now we can start up our machine. And now we're gonna walk through the regular Windows XP setup, so just hit enter to continue. Uh, you're going to hit F8 to agree, but if that doesn't work, then make sure you hold FN when you press F8. Then select enter again to select the unpartitioned space, and then I'd recommend going with NTFS quick. And this shouldn't take long here. And once your computer reboots, make sure not to press a key to enter the setup, just let it go. Now you'll notice you can move your mouse around as if you're actually in the operating system. And pretty soon it's going to ask us for a product key, which if you used my ISO that I provided in the zip, I also included a text document which includes that product key here. Now select next, you can give the user a name. And now you enter the product key, which is right below my screen, and I'll probably have it in the description as well. Go ahead and give the computer a name. If you'd like to put in a password, you can. If you don't want a password, just leave it blank. Next. Now it's going to install some drivers that it thinks it needs, but I have different drivers that will actually work right. Um, just leave the network as typical. Next. And now we're pretty close to actually booting into the live environment here. And if you'd like, you can close this text document now because we'll no longer need it. And now if everything went right, we should be able to now boot into the operating system. And here we are. Now we can go ahead and install the network drivers and the guest edition drivers, which are for the display and sharing folders and all that kind of stuff. And if you'd like, you can mess around with the display settings. All right, now let's go ahead and install our guest editions drivers so that we can access our network drivers from a shared folder. So what you do is you right click on this disk right here and then go ahead and remove the disk from the virtual drive. Now right click again and you're gonna wanna go to choose create a disk image and then locate the guest editions ISO file 
and then click on choose and it should open right away because we get auto start just click on next next install and this is a bit of an older driver so it's saying it's not signed but it's still compatible with this version of windows xp so just click yes continue anyway continue anyway continue anyway and then go ahead and click i want to reboot later then click finish now right click on the disk again and then select remove disk from virtual drive then go over to the start and then turn off this computer once that shuts down it should close the window now go back into settings go to shared folders click on the plus and then you're going to want to select a shared folder which you can either make a new one or select a pre-existing one and then select auto mount and now press OK. OK. Now locate that folder and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to copy this network driver which is an exe file into that shared folder. Now we can boot up our Windows XP virtual machine again. And now what you'll notice is when we go to the start menu, my computer, there'll be a network drive. So go ahead and click that, it should be the name of your folder, and then double click on the exe file here. And this will allow us to install the network drivers. Let's click on next, I accept the terms. Um, just have these boxes checked here, next, install. And after about a moment or so, it should say to open device manager and you can see that it has all the updated network drivers. Just click on finish. And the next thing I'd recommend doing is Internet Explorer is very incompatible with basically any website at this point. And I found that Opera is a pretty decent alternative. It's not great, but at least it allows you to go to Google and like go to different sites to download apps for this virtual box here. And to access that, I put that in the zip folder as well. So you can go ahead and copy the Opera install from the zip folder into that shared folder we just made. And now just go back to my computer, go to the network drives, and then just go ahead and install the Opera installer like we just did with the network driver. And here we are, we now have internet within our Windows XP virtual machine. And for some reason it's gonna say invalid certificate, but you can just hit continue anyway. I'm sure there are plenty of other browsers out there that work pretty well, but I just wanted to find a quick and easy one that would just get it up and running for now. And yeah, that's basically your full-fledged VirtualBox Windows XP experience here. Web browser, we got all the drivers we could get installed, we got internet on here. Um, we've got pretty basic display adapters, but they work well enough for this. It's not like you're going to be playing games on this. Thank you for watching, and I hope you found everything helpful. If you enjoyed the video, I hope you stick around for more, because I do plan on making some more virtual Vox videos soon.